All right, welcome back to Digital Electronics. We're going to talk about uh, universal NAND gates today. Really, it means not AND, okay? So, we're just going to talk about the basic function of it, how we can use a uh, NAND gate to make an AND, an OR, or an inverter gate. We're also going to talk about, you know, how most of the technology that you use in your phone and things like that all uses NAND and OR technology instead of AY technology. Uh, because, you know, like I stated before, we can make whatever gate we want from a NAND gate. So, effectively saving lots of money. This is a NAND gate, okay? Notice it looks like an AND gate, only there's a bubble in front. Remember, anytime you see a bubble, that means that we are inverting the signal. So the NAND gate here can be written as the output Z is equal to not X and Y, and then if we use our uh, De Morgan's theorem, we break the line, change the sign, it can also be written as not x or not y. If we look at the truth table here, uh, here's a NAND. It will be the exact opposite of a NAND. So when we have x and y, x and y is 0, and then we invert it, so the output would be a 1. Okay, we have 0 and 1, that's a 0, and then we invert the output to get a 1. If we have a 1 and a 0, we get 0, but then we invert it because of the bubble and we get a 1. Then if we have 1 and 1, we get a 1, but then the bubble inverts it and we get a 0. So there's how we go through the truth table for a NAND gate. Alright, we can use a NAND gate as an inverter. So what we can do is notice the input there is a single variable x. So we're going to put x into both uh, sides of the NAND gate. When we do that, we get x and x, and then after the bubble, we get not x, so we get the x bar. Okay, so that's how we create an inverter. Okay, we're going to invert the signal x, so we're going to put in a normal x and get back not x. That's how we use the NAND gate as an inverter. All right, next, we're going to take a look how we can use a NAND gate as an AND gate. It takes two... NAND gates connected together to make an AND gate. Okay, so what we do is we have X NAND Y, so that gives us X and Y inverted. It gives us not X and Y. That's the middle piece there where the arrow is. And then we send that single signal into the inverter NAND gate, all right, so that we get the output of that, we get X y double bar and remember double bar using de morgan's becomes just x y so there's how we use a nand gate it takes two nand gates to make one and gate okay let's look at how we use a nand gate or a combination of nand gates to create an or gate so notice we invert the two signals we're going to invert x and we're going to invert y. So we're going to send those both into their own NAND gate, being the inverter piece on that. And then we're going to NAND both of those together. So we're going to have not x and not y. And then that's going, when that gets NAND and it goes through that bubble at the end, we get a bar over not x and not y. Remember, the bars will be separate here. It won't be a whole bar over the x and y there uh, because they're coming through the inverter separately. If they came through it together like in the last step there would be a bar over the entire expression. Okay, so we're going to get um, not x, not y, bar. Alright, so then we have to do De Morgan's. We're going to break the line and change the sign. So we're going to get x double bar or y double bar and the double bars cancel so we get x or y. So that's how we're using NAND as an OR gate uh, when we go through this. All right, this is going to be very important because you're going to take a circuit that we're going to do and you're going to write that entire circuit all in NAND gates. So you're going to have to kind of replace chunks as you go. All right, but here's a main slide that shows the equivalent of an AND gate. It takes two NAND gates. An OR takes three NAND gates. And an inverter takes a single NAND gate we send in a signal uh, value there. All 
right, so we are going to take our AOI circuit, our AND, OR, and our inverter circuit, and we're going to convert it to a NAND circuit. Okay, so we're going to go through. So here's a few steps here that we're going to walk through as we do this. All right, so we're going to implement our original design in AOI. That's our first step. Then our second step is we're going to replace all the ANDs, orders, ORs, and inverters with the NAND equivalent. So that's what we had here on the previous slide. We're going to replace, whenever we see an AND, we're going to put two NANDs. Whenever we see an OR, we're going to put three NANDs. Whenever we see an inverter, we're going to put a single NAND. Okay, so that's step two. Step three, redrawing the circuit with those new implementations in step two. Uh, step four is important. We want to identify and eliminate any double inversions because we're if we're double inverting something, we're getting the same signal back, which means we can actually eliminate that portion of our circuit. That'll make sense once you see it happen. And then our final step, just redraw the circuit in all NAND. So we're going to take this basic circuit here. We have an AOI circuit, right? We have an inverter, we have two AND gates, and we have an OR gate. And we are going to redraw all of those and replace all of those with their NAND equivalents. Okay, so when we do that, when you should do this, you know, do it kind of step by step uh, so that you make sure that you're getting all the connections correct. Okay, so we're going to replace each one. So like I said before, that inverter gets replaced with one NAND. Both of those AND gates each get replaced with two NAND gates. And that OR gate gets replaced with those three different NAND gates. Okay, very, very important that we do the replacement correctly. So when we do that, the circuit's going to look like this. Notice we've gone from AOI, which is step two in the implementation, and replaced all the ANDs, ORs, and inverters with their NAND equivalents, and the circuit will look like this. Now, we look for double inversions. If we have double inversions, we can eliminate them. All right, we can remove them from the circuit, which double inversion, remember, just means if I put something in and I go through a couple NAND gates, I get the same thing out, and that's the only thing in that string. I can eliminate it. Okay, there's two sets of double inversions looking at this circuit here. Okay, so we've redrawn the circuit all in terms of NAND. Those are the double inversions. So this is step four. We can eliminate those because if I put one value in that first NAND, it goes through two of those and I get the same value out. So that's why it's a double inversion and we can eliminate it. Just be careful when you're doing this step. Some of you guys get over anxious and excited about eliminating stuff and you can't eliminate everything. But you can eliminate everything in this scenario here. So that really takes this circuit here and simplifies it down to just this circuit. All right, so this is the NAND equivalent of the original circuit that we started with. That just saved us a lot of money, okay? Just saved us a lot of money, and I'll explain why here in a second. But for your sake, when you're doing your designs, do what I have here. Write out in text what's coming out of each gate so that you understand what's happening. It will really make a big difference for you guys when you do this, okay? so. How did we save money? Well, look at the first circuit, which is the original circuit that we did. Okay, that's our AOI circuit on the left-hand side. There's an AND, or an AND chip, an OR chip, and an inverter chip. So, so there's three chips, okay? Yes, we only have one, two, three, four gates, but there's three different chips there. That's what we're calling total number of IC Okay, integrated circuits, that's our IC. Okay, versus the NAND technology on the right, there are one, two, three, four NAND gates, but there's only one chip. Remember that with NAND technology, okay, you can build all the different AOI. But remember, each one of these chips has four different gates on it. An AND chip has four gates, 
an OR chip has four gates, an inverter has six gates, okay? And then a NAND chip has four gates. So here's where it costs, where it's cost effective. Notice on the left-hand side, we had to buy three different chips, an 04, an 08, and a 32, to build that circuit. So let's say they're 30 cents a piece. That means it cost us 90 cents to build that circuit on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we built it using NAND. Cost us one chip. Let's say that it's a little bit more expensive chip. Let's say it's 40 cents a chip. We still saved 50 cents building the circuit using NAND instead of AOI. Now I know saving 50 cents isn't a big deal, but if you think about the circuits in your phone, in your Xbox, PlayStation, all those different things, when you are starting to talk about a thousand chips, saving 50 cents is a lot of money. It adds up quickly, all right, and how many there are there. So. That's how NAND technology and why we do all of our circuits in NAND, all right, is our kind of our savior. It makes everything much more cost effective and much more cost efficient. So that's one reason that we developed NAND technology and why we use NAND technology. We can do the same thing with NOR, and that's going to be your next lecture. Uh, we're going to go through NOR technology, uh, which is not OR. But uh, that's it for this lecture. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to email me or if you need me to Zoom or team meet with you or else. Guys, I'll go over this in class and if you guys have any questions then, uh, you can ask them then. Alright guys, have a great day. We'll see you soon.